well so I thought that I should make a video about guide dog 2.0 this is my second guide dog Rosie and I realized that I have shown her in some vlogs and some videos but I haven't made a video just introducing her to the YouTube fam so you all can get to meet her of course she is very prevalent on my social media so you see her a lot on there she has her own Instagram and Twitter and Facebook page but I thought I'd make a video about just you today so this is Rosie Rosie is three she turned three on the 2nd of December didn't you darling and she is my second guide dog now I realize that most people make a video pretty soon after they get their new guide dog but I needed some time to get to know her and then when I was ready to make a video about her sadly unity passed away and honestly I was just not ready to make a video like ta-da here's my new guide dog when my first guide dog had just passed away so I waited but better late than never hey better late than never so Rosie and I have been a working partnership for over a year now we met each other in August for our first match visit and then we started training together in September and we officially qualified as a working partnership in October and we have been working together ever since and we have been a working partnership for over a year I was not expecting to get a new guide dog so quickly because I had only retired Unity in January 2021 and honestly I did not think I would get a guide dog so soon because in the UK right now the waiting lists for guide dogs are very long they say that on average you can wait up to a year and a half for a guide dog depending if they've got the right dog for you and it's just no guarantee how long you're going to be waiting you could be waiting any amount of time it's all about whether they've got the right dog that matches you and where you are on the list if there's the dog that matches you you could have only been waiting for a guide dog for a few weeks it's just a case of where you you are on the list and obviously who is in front of you. I was not expecting to get ready so soon. I was on priority one because I was without a guide dog and I had just retired Unity so automatically if you are waiting for a replacement guide dog you are put at priority one. I was not expecting it to be so quick but I'm so glad it was. In effect I was only six months without a guide dog between Unity and Rosie and to be honest I'm glad it happened the way it did and I had that time between having a guide dog because I think everything happens for a reason it helped me get a lot better with my long cane skills and just in general develop a lot more of a better relationship using my long cane which is great because if I ever want to go away on holiday and not take my guide dogs it means that I'm just going to be a lot more mentally equipped to use my cane and I've just got a better relationship with it now so I'm glad it happened the way it did and I wouldn't change it to be honest now I got the call actually when I was on the train going home from holiday with my friends and I got a call from my well, would-be guide dog trainer Amy who told me that they thought they had a match for me and honestly I screamed on the train I was so excited I was like oh my god I think I'm gonna get a guide dog and everyone on the train was just in awe watching me this girl like in hysterics over the fact that she might have her second guide dog pretty soon and honestly my friends were so thrilled for me my family was so thrilled when I told them but we didn't want to jinx it because you never know you can go to matching visits and it doesn't work out and the dog's not a really good fit for you and it just doesn't work out they're usually pretty good at matching you but sometimes things can happen and it's just not a viable match so i didn't want to jinx it they told me her name what she looked like i knew she was a black labrador golden retriever cross and her name was rosie and she was quite driven they wanted me to have her because they thought i would be a good match because of my age and I was very excited and the next week I went to London to meet her I remember it very vividly because we were going to London already for a Paddington Bear exhibition and then straight afterwards we met her and they, they brought her to me and I had some time to interact with her and then we went out on what is called a matching walk where they get you to go and walk with the dog and they see how you walk together if your walking speeds match if you're able to keep up a good pace with the dog if the dog listens to you and just generally if you vibe you know they want to make sure you have a good vibe together so that they can say yes this is a good match or no we're going to keep looking so we went on this matching walk and rosie was as a guide dog to be honest one thing i will say rosie was very affectionate to me 
immediately off harness. She was a little bit hesitant at first, she did eventually walk for me in the end, but at first she was a little bit disconcerted by the whole thing, which, you know what, fair enough, that is absolutely fine. Guide dogs have to go for a lot of change in the first couple of years of their, of their life, because they first get a puppy walker, and then a guide dog trainer, and also a boarder who looks after them in between them getting trained in the daytime and having somewhere to stay at night. So it's a big process for them before they eventually come to their guide dog owners. So it's a lot for them to take in. So I was prepared for that to happen, but she did work really well for me. She had a little bit of a funny incident where she barked at a crow that landed right in front of her, which kind of took me by surprise. And I realized she had a little bit of a obsession with pigeons. She did not like them when I first got her. So she was very different in terms of the way she worked to Unity. She at first was a little bit of a pocket rocket. She was a little bit of a firecracker. And she just kind of took me a little bit by surprise because I just was not expecting it. Unity was such a no-nonsense, very stiff up of a lip, get on with her work kind of guide dog. And Rosie being a young dog that had been brought up during lockdown was a bit different, which is fair enough. And they said, she's a good guide dog, she will work well for you, but you just have to be prepared to put the work in and be patient. And I was so desperate for a guide dog and she was so sweet. I was like, well, fine by me. You know, she's a, she's a nice dog, she's very sweet. I'm prepared to do what it takes to get her to where she needs to be. Rosie was a dog that wormed her way into my heart because at first I'd just gone from having my first guide dog and honestly I was quite emotionally battered at this point because Unity had cancer and I'd had to retire Unity which was devastating and at first I found it very difficult to kind of give myself to another guide dog and to open up to another guide dog because I felt like I was betraying Unity all the time and it took a while to build up that relationship just because going from one to two is difficult. Every guide dog owner says the first to the second guide dog is the hardest because that guide dog is your whole experience. It's all you've ever known and it's very hard to adapt to a new guide dog and true to what they said they were right. It was very difficult but I knew that I'd have to give her a chance and give it some time for our relationship to develop and honestly it didn't take very long for her to worm her way in there because she's very sweet she's a really sweet dog she's so attentive and she's absolutely lovely she was absolutely no trouble in the hotel at night she was really sweet she'd come over and say hello to me in the morning but honestly such a nice sweet little dog really really affectionate loved cuddles from the first day I met her she gave me a paw and she had me sat on the floor rubbing her paws because she's an absolute pampered princess. That's one thing I can tell you about Rosie. She is a spoiled baby, aren't you? She likes having her massages done. Honestly, I want to take this dog to a doggy spa, like an actual doggy spa because I know she is the sort of dog who would love that kind of thing. <laughs> so I actually trained with Rosie in a hotel which was kind of a new experience because Unity, I trained with her at home because it was in between me going to university and also my A levels so they trained me with her at home. So Rosie was the first dog where I trained in a hotel and I had to stay on my own in a hotel room away from my family for about about two weeks which was a, a kind of a strange experience. It was a bit weird st to start off with but I had a really nice time. I met some other guide dog owners there and it was it was a nice experience and I had some really fun memories and I really got on with all of my trainers and I, I did really enjoy the experience in the end and I think there's some really good memories that I'll never forget and um, I'm glad I did it because it was definitely a different experience that I really enjoyed and it's a lot more hands-on compared to when you train with a guide dog at home where they just come out to you. I think training with a guide dog in a hotel it pushes you out of your comfort zone and you really have to get to grips with a different environment especially me because I was training in central London every day and that was a real experience but I'm glad of that because I think it really makes you just get out there the minute you have that guide dog you're really just raring to go because you've already been in quite busy situations already and uh, I really enjoyed it now we qualified in October and we have been working together ever since Rosie is also a dog that can go on the escalators. My first guide dog Unity sadly could not because she had an accident with them when she was quite young and she ripped her claw out because she was quite hesitant to walk on and off them. So they could not train her again. Whereas with Rosie, because I'd said in my application that because of the fact I go to London all the time, I need a dog that can go 
on the escalator they were already looking for a dog that could be escalator trained and Rosie was actually in the middle of being escalator trained when I first met her and they said that they would work on that so that she could go on them when I eventually got her. I did have to do some extra training for that and they had to do a few extra sessions with me before they could sign me off to be trained on the escalator because it's quite a big thing for them to do and only London based guide dogs or dogs that work in London a lot can be trained and it takes quite a lot of time so it's not something that any guide dog can do in the UK. I don't know if it's the same in other countries but here in the UK you will usually find it's only dogs who either work or live in central London that can get trained on them because of the fact that they're quite risky and it's only escalators that they can go on that are on the underground because they're longer and they level out for a longer period of time so the dog has more time to jump off them and they're a bit more safer and even then you have to have training before you can get signed off to go on them and you have to get a special tick in your guide dog book to say that your dog can go on the escalator but she absolutely loves the escalator she treats it like it's a ride i had to tone it down because she got so excited to see them she tried to pull me over to them a few times because she loves going on them so i've had to kind of get rid of the high value treats now she has to have regular treats because beforehand she was getting peanut butter and all sorts to go on them now you just get your boring biscuits because you're just still absolutely obsessed with them which is kind of weird because i've gone from a guide dog who absolutely hated escalators to having a dog that's like yeah take me on them now it's a ride so <laughs> definitely a different experience now rosie as a guide dog is very different to rosie in the home as a pet dog rosie as a guide dog she's very sweet she's very attentive she's incredibly well behaved she is so kind and she walks at the pace that i want to go at and she's really good at finding her way around things she's got a really amazing memory and she's very intuitive and she kind of knows what sort of things i'm going to ask her to do what do we call you huh what are your nicknames we call you nosy rosie because you're very nosy you're always in other people's business you like to nose in people's shopping bags like you did the other day when we had bought you Christmas presents and you stole one, you stole your turkey toy out of the bag, didn't you? So you're nosy Rosie. Yes, you're nosy Rosie. What else do we call you? We call you Baby Rose because you are a baby. We call you Bat because you sleep upside down. So we call you Bat. As a home dog, as a dog off the harness, she's a nutcase. She was nicknamed in the guide dog offices in London the Wild Rose because she was wild. She had to be housed in guide dogs. They have pens in the office and usually they have a few dogs in together. But with Rosie, because of how wild she was, she had to be homed in a pen on her own. So she didn't have any doggy friends because she was too nutty and apparently she'd wrestle with them all the time and make the dogs cross and she'd wear the dogs out before they'd go out on walks. So Rosie had to be on her own because she was a little bit too wild to go in with any of the other dogs. So you can imagine what it was like when Rosie came here and met Unity, my old dog with cancer. Unity did put her in her place very quickly but Rosie was all over her and just honestly the pair were just like a married couple, they were so funny but Rosie absolutely adored Unity and it was quite sad when we lost Unity because she'd lost her best friend. I think one of the difficult things about having Rosie in the early days was the fact that I already had a guide dog in the house, I already had Unity and Unity tried to go to the harness when she saw me get it out for Rosie and it was quite hard because how do you tell a retired guide dog, darling you don't work anymore, you're not a working guide dog because that's all she'd ever known and she loved working. It was difficult because I felt like I harboured so much guilt, like I was rejecting Unity and I felt so guilty and then as she got worse with the cancer that was just another thing to add to it. But it was hard, you know, going from having the two guide dogs in the house to only the one was a big adjustment and I think it really was an adjustment for Rosie as well because she'd lost her best friend and they'd only known each other for five months but honestly they were so sweet together and they had a really good bond and they used to sleep together on the sofa and just have such a, a lovely relationship so that was a really hard part about having Rosie in the early days having to lose unity so early on. It made me have a stronger bond with Rosie because Rosie really helped me through the darkest periods of losing unity so that was definitely something I think helped our relationship grow stronger. We are now doing very well as a working partnership Rosie is such a good dog, <laughs> she's very sweet, she is such a lovely dog, we have a really great relationship, we 
do so much together. She's been on holiday with me. She's now working with me in my career as a journalist. So she now is a working dog with me uh, as I start my career as a journalist. She is such a happy-go-lucky dog. She's got a really puppy-like streak. She loves to play. She loves cuddles. She loves to be pampered. Honestly, the thing that this dog has me doing, I have to rub her paws. When we've been out for a long walk and it's in the evening, she will literally give me her paw. That's one thing she does. She gives me her paw when she wants me to rub it and I'll have to rub her paws for her. Rosie was brought up with a family and she had two little boys in the family and apparently one of the little boys taught her paw and now it's something she does to everyone. She gives her paw to everyone but she also can wave as well. I taught her how to wave because we do occasionally get invited to Netflix red carpet events so if I ever go to one with her I'll get her to wave for the red carpet event. She's always up for learning something new and she's always up for a new challenge. She's really raring to go. She's got a really kind of like easygoing keen side to her. She's really keen for new things and she's just really up for a challenge and it's nice to have a dog that's like that. So I wanted to see I couldn't be more grateful to have this dog in my life. She is the loveliest dog and she's just got the best personality and honestly for a second guy dog I don't think I could have found a better match. So there we are, you have officially met Rosie now, my second guide dog. I really hope you enjoy seeing her and what we get up to. Let me know what kind of content you'd like me to create on her in the future and if you have any questions about her, maybe I could do a Q&A or something of that nature. Let me know what you'd like me to make on her in the future and if you'd like me to do regular updates on her. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long to film a video with her in it but Better late than never, you finally met her and I really hope you welcome her all into the family and give her a massive welcome as my lovely, wonderful, slightly weird, sweet, amazing second guide dog.